can't even begin to describe today. <laughs> Been absolutely amazing. All the people taking photos, the crazy Instagrammers, which they're very brave. <laughs> but ah, it's been amazing. A common question asked when cruising the Norwegian fjords and stopping at Alden is should I do the low and sky lift? This is then quickly followed by should I book it as an official excursion? This video tackles both these questions. Let's deal with the second question first as it's simpler to answer. No, you should never book the low and sky lift as an excursion unless you are extremely paranoid about missing the ship. It's nigh on impossible to miss the ship doing this independently, but if you are extremely, and I mean extremely, <laughs> paranoid about it, the excursion would give you that peace of mind. You can buy the ticket for the Lone Skylift from the Alden Adventures ticket office, which is literally on the dock. Get off the ship, look to the right, and there it is. When I did the Skylift, it cost 850 in local currency, which was about £70 at the time. So it's not cheap, especially if you're a large group paying out of the same pot of money. So you do have to consider it. The buses run very regularly and they take about 5-10 to 10 minutes to get to the Skylift. The journey to Lohan is along a road hugging the fjord, it's quite a picturesque journey. In terms of distance you could actually walk to the Lone Skylift but I wouldn't recommend it as I observed that that road quite often had no pedestrian section so it'd be quite challenging. There is also another very good reason why you don't want to book the excursion and that is so you can decide to do it on the day. You can also combine this with a half day excursion and this brings us to the next question. Personally, I believe you should do the Lone Skylift because I'm a fan of anything that lets me experience things at great height without some ridiculous climb or hike. Because I'm not really up to it. So if there's a cable car, win. <laughs> there are two reasons for doing the Lone Skylift and it changes the nature of the decision. Are you doing the Lone Skylift to get to the top? Enjoy the picturesque view over the fjord and take some pictures? Or are you going up to do one of the hikes? As the top of the Lone Skylift is a full on trailhead. If you want it for the gram or your photo collection, then you are very dependent on the weather, as it can be nice weather at the bottom, but the top can be obscured with low clouds and you'll not see much. This is the reason you should not book the excursion, as choosing to go on the day allows you to check out the weather comprehensively before deciding to spend the money. There are even webcams which allow you to check out the weather at the top. So check the weather app, sample the weather in the port, check the webcams once you get internet access in Alden and then decide to go in the moment. I've put the webcams in the video description. At the top there is an official viewing area and the area is paved as well as numerous walkways in the immediate vicinity. So the immediate area at the top is wheelchair friendly. If you're more mobile, brave or aren't hindered by wheeled support, there is a killer shot. <laughs> it is to the right and down from the arrival area and it looks literally over the fjord. You can literally look down. <laughs> I'll leave it to you how brave you get. If you're looking to do more than take a photo, then you do have various trails. There are six hiking trails from the top of the Lone Skylift and for reasons that are still inexplicable to me they are numbered 1 to 5 and then 8. <laughs> they are graded green, blue, red and black in order of difficulty but none of them are black. There is one green, three blue and two red. I can't comment on the blue and red trails directly as I didn't want to push my luck on my first visit. I did do one trail, the one marked green and it's a proper hike, so just keep that in mind. Sometimes green trails mean they're just ambleable with a wheelchair or you know wheeled support, and then sometimes green trails mean they're just not very strenuous but are still hikes. Uh, I went in July, and there were a few short, short sections on this green trail that were actually calf height in snow, and the rest of it was like rocky trails and you certainly needed ankle support. So, you know, no wheeled vehicles and you have to be able bodies. This means you should not underestimate the green trail. <laughs> I think you're going to get a mundane paved walk. You can be more flexible with the weather if you're doing a hike. 
I did the majority of my hike in low-lying mist and it was fantastic. If I had not come up here because of the mist, I took a risk, I got the bus and I thought I'm here, I'm going to do it whether it's misty or not. But if I'd have said, no, it looks misty, for example, if I'd have been able to check the camera, if my phone hadn't been, the phone's given me trouble because it thinks I've ran out of data, but I shouldn't have done because I'm allowed to use my full data in Norway. But anyway, so I couldn't check, but it's a good job I didn't check. So if I had checked, it mightn't have come. I'd have missed this. And I'd have been unknowingly very disappointed. I mean, I probably missed the odd killer view of the fjord from certain points on the hike, but I did get this constant epic, epic panning shot feel, like I was in the mystical scenes of the show Vikings or something. It was really spectacular, even though I had low lying mist and I had no regrets of doing it in that weather. The weather also changes quite rapidly, which meant that by the time I did get back to the lone skylift, the weather had changed and I had the clear view over the fjord and the olden port and the ship from the top. This did mean I did join the crazy Instagrammers getting their cliff edge shots for the gram. <laughs> I, I did get an edge shot, but I will admit some of them are way braver than I am. So to review, do not book the excursion, as what you're paying for is literally the same thing as booking on the dock. Yeah, I know people are nervous about missing the ship, but it is very hard to miss the ship on this excursion. <laughs> if you're just going for the view over the fjord, make sure you check the weather and use the webcams before deciding to pay. Or you could end up paying multiple £70 just to be surrounded by mist. If you're doing a hike, be more flexible with the weather as doing it with clear skies and with low-lying cloud is just two very different experiences. And I found it awesome either way, and the weather may well clear by the time you've finished your hike. Just keep in mind, none of the hikes are paved, pushchair-friendly walks, they are all hikes, and there was even snow in July. The final item, ensure you take layers of clothing no matter what the weather is like. At the bottom it can be very different to the top. Don't be the guy going up in a t-shirt, shorts and flip-flops, as you will likely regret it. Beyond that, unless you literally have no interest in seeing Alden from a height and the beauty of the fjord, you should do the lawn skylift.